Happy Easter. Our opening hymn is in the Gather Hymnal, number 540. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. Amen. We have completed our Lenten observance, and now we come to celebrate the feast. We sing our alleluias in praise of our, the God of our salvation. As we begin this celebration, we turn our hearts to the risen Lord in praise and thanksgiving, asking the Lord for forgiveness for those times when we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you are victor over death. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us to see and to believe. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are risen to eternal glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for the reading of the word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. 
Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On special solemnities and feasts in the church, there are ancient hymns and prayers and poems that are recited before the Alleluia and the Gospel. And today, of course, with the solemnity of the resurrection of our Lord, is one of those days when we have an ancient hymn. It's known as a sequence. The sequence can be found in the Missalettes on page 108. Together, we will recite at the top of the page. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciled sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring, what you saw, wayfaring, the tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor, king, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. <coughs> On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. 
When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. God desired to enter into a new relationship with humanity and create a new covenant with his people, a new covenantal relationship where God would be our father and we would be God's children. To institute this new covenant, the perfect victim was needed to sacrifice. The perfect priest was needed to offer this sacrifice. The perfect temple was necessary to offer the sacrifice in. A perfect time was needed to offer the sacrifice, and a perfect altar was needed to offer the sacrifice on. In Jesus, God and humanity came together, Son of God and Son of Mary. Jesus was the perfect mediator between God and humanity because Jesus was fully human and fully divine. Jesus, being the divine Son of God, is the eternal high priest who is the perfect person to offer the perfect sacrifice of blood to forgive us of our sins once and for all. Jesus was the perfect sacrificial victim because he is sinless. He did no wrong. He was tempted without sin and was perfectly obedient to the Father even unto death. He became the new Lamb of God and shed his precious blood on the altar of the cross for us. He had no sin on his hands, no deceit on his lips. So when Jesus prayed from the cross, asking the Father to forgive us of our sins, it was a pure and perfectly effective prayer. Jesus' body was the perfect temple in which to offer this new sacrifice because his body was the full dwelling place of God. As we say in the creed, he is consubstantial with the Father. Jesus is God from God, light from light. He became our Passover and our surest peace. And when the hour of fulfillment had come, on the night before he died, Jesus gathered with his disciples to celebrate the annual Passover supper. This night, though, would be different from all others because Jesus changed the words. He made this Passover, which was his last supper, the very first Mass. During supper, Jesus ordained the disciples as the first priests of this new covenant that God was entering into through Christ, making us his beloved children. Jesus gave the disciples the power to confect the Eucharist, his own body and blood, transubstantiated from the wine and unleavened bread, instructing that they should do this in memory of me. Using the elements of bread and wine made possible the eating of his body and the drinking of his blood, which he said was necessary to have eternal life. So with everything now set in place, and even though Jesus was innocent of any wrongdoing, the blame for our sins was laid upon him as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. There he was arrested, tried by the elders, the chief priests, the Sanhedrin. Jesus was scourged, nailed to the cross, and put to death. Placed in a stone tomb, he rose from the dead three days later and appeared to various people before finally ascending into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father, 
where he continues to pray for us today. Meanwhile, the apostles form the new church of this new covenant, teaching people about the one final and true sacrifice offered in Jesus' blood. What is necessary for salvation is faith through being baptized into his new church, into the body of Christ. Today, Jews commemorate the feast of Passover with what is known as the Seder meal. At the celebration of the Jewish Seder, there are four questions that a child asks, among which is a question, why is this night different from all other nights? Why is this night different from all other nights? That's a good question for us to ponder. Knowing all that took place leading up to this new covenant, why is this day, Easter Sunday, different from all others? Well, this day is different from all other days because of what Jesus did for us as he instituted the new covenant in his blood. This day is different because on it, three days after his death and burial took place, he rose from the dead. Think back to Palm Sunday and on Good Friday when the Passion account was read and when Jesus said, it is finished, and he died, and we knelt for a few moments of silence. Foremost among those things included in that word, it, when Jesus said, it is finished, is our eternal death. When Jesus said, it is finished, he meant eternally being separated from God is finished. That's reason enough for us to celebrate. But Jesus brought to a finish even more. With this new covenant, the effect that sin had over us was finished. Jesus carried all our sin to the cross with him. So when he was nailed to the cross, sin was nailed to the cross too. The power sin had over us died on the cross. This day is different from all others because on it, Jesus rose from the dead. Unlike the disobedience of Adam, Jesus lived a perfectly obedient life. So there was nothing in him that death could grab a hold of. Nothing could hold him captive. We rejoice this day because Jesus Christ carried everything in him that death held over us. And when he died and descended into the realm of the dead, he left the dead of our sin there. Three days later, Christ was raised from the dead. And as he rose, Jesus gathered up the souls of the deceased and took them with him to heaven, paving the way for the realm, through the realm of death for us to follow. There is our Easter victory. One day, death will take our body just as it took his. But if we stay in a right relationship with Jesus Christ and his church, then death cannot hold us either. We rejoice because through the precious body and blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, we can now live forever and spend eternity with God in the paradise of heaven. That is what makes this day different from all others. Today, Christians, victory is ours in Jesus Christ. Alleluia. At this time, we'll have the renewal of our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works 
and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth and water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have our intention prayer. And so we bring all of our needs and intentions before our loving God. We pray for these successors of the apostles in the church today, commissioned to preach to the people that, like Peter, they may boldly proclaim the resurrection of Christ and the forgiveness of sins in his name. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Bishop Callahan, and for our new bishop, Gerard Battersby. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that Jesus, the great cornerstone, may not be rejected by the builders of our society, but that the right hand of the Lord may be exalted in him, building nations focused on life, justice, morality, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We, pr we pray for those who have entered into full communion with the Catholic faith, May this begin a long journey of growing in faith and love with our risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that all Christians may offer to the Paschal victim their thankful praises today, renewing their vows to him, joy and gratitude for his victory of divine love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer, who grieve, who are distressed in mind and heart, that Jesus, who brought unexpected exaltation to Mary Magdalene and the apostles on that first Easter Sunday, may give them also a share in his rising to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our faithful departed ones who were signed with the cross of Jesus, that the power of his glorious resurrection may bring them rejoicing into the wedding banquet of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the souls of Clarence and Vangie Wilikowski. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you answer these prayers and all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Please be seated now for the offertory. Our offertory hymn is in the Gather Hymnal, number 534.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also, for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Clarence and Banji Wilikowski, and all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our hymn for communion is in the Gather Hymnal, number 523.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a moment to say thank you to everyone who made these liturgies so beautiful through the Triduum and, and today and in a, in a special way our choir. Thank you so much under the direction of Judy Truicki. We appreciate your music very much. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn will be found on the sheets in your pews. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits 
who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. John the Baptist, pray for us. 